and welcome to the first ever DEC podcast. How are you guys doing out there? Hello. Woo! The, if you didn't know the DEC, Hi, everybody. Yeah, if you didn't know that the DEC is the Department of Evangelization and Catechesis, and since it's our first podcast, we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Kevin. I'm the Director of Evangelization and Catechesis. I'm Cecilia, Associate Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry. My name is Ana Ibarra, and I'm the Associate Director of the North State Revitalization Project. And we are here to talk to you just a little bit about some of the things that are going on in the DEC. Uh, we try to get the word out to the parishes, and a lot of times they don't hear about things. So um, let's start up in the north. Um, Ana, you've got a new project going up there. Yes, this is a new venture for the diocese, having uh, evangelization up here in the north. Uh, this is something that um, that is close to my heart. That was this was one of the first things that I saw that was was a necessity being being present up here to to the north part of our of our diocese, and uh, I've been working with uh, some of the priests and also with um, the parish councils and the diocesan pastoral councils of the Siskiyou and Shasta deanery that I've met with already, and they've already brought forth some of their concerns which are very, very different from the city and uh, from the city deaneries in, in our diocese. And um, it's something exciting that the diocese is doing and, and being present to these more rural parishes that are, that are up here in the north. Uh, some of them are, are not just remote, they're beyond remote. And, uh, but uh, it's not only going to be a challenge, but a wonderful opportunity to reach out to the people that are kind of feeling... Um, outcast and, and marginalized, not because they're, they don't believe or anything like that. It's just, we haven't been a presence up here for them. So this is a, this is something that many people are very excited about. They're very happy that Bishop Soto has decided to do this for them at, at this time. That's great. Now I understand that uh, you should tell them a little bit about your own personal sacrifice. Um, Anna was a, uh, was living down, she, she recently moved here from Los Angeles and she's worked for our department for how long, Anna? Uh, I was in Sacramento for a year and a half after moving from Los Angeles and uh, now living up in Redding, which is about two and a half hours north of Sacramento. And yes, people of the South, there is farther north than, than Sacramento. Uh, many of my friends were shocked. They said, there's farther north in California after Sacramento? And I said, you have no idea. And um, so I'm living up here in, in the north. It's a very, very different uh, way of life, but it's, it's kind of growing on me being, being out here in, in this uh, rural part. And um, I'm living in Redding, which if you go farther north from, from Redding, the, the people up in, in the, the farther north will say that Redding is the big city. You know, and, and uh, I kind of look around and think, oh, wow, <laughs> coming from Los Angeles, this is not the big city, but okay, you know, um, it's, uh, it's really um, very eye-opening, the, the different needs that are, that are here in, in the North. Um, more than anything, they're just looking for presence. They're looking for leadership. Um, not that there isn't already leadership here, but because, um, because we haven't been such a, a prominent presence for them, they're, they're really looking for that leadership. They're looking for someone to say, yes, you're doing a good job. Keep doing it. Let's try to, let's try to do this together. And uh, let's try. So, so this is, um, like I said before, it's a challenge, but it's also a, a great opportunity to meet, to meet the people that are here uh, where they are uh, and, um, and how we can help them move forward in their, their, their ministries at the parishes up here. Uh Two other notes is that uh, we are, we're kicking that project off with a conference on Halloween. We're inviting all of the priests, the deacons, and uh, selected lay people from the parishes for one big uh, conference. And when we talk about the North State, we're talking about four deaneries within the diocese. We're talking about the Ridge Deanery, the Siskiyou Deanery, the Sutter Buttes Deanery, and the Shasta Deanery. And um, if you want more information on that, you can look on our website. There's under parishes, there's a list of parishes by deanery, and you can see the huge number of parishes that are up there. We're really talking about, I think it's 22 or 23 parishes um, that on... No, there's 30, there's 30 parishes, yeah. There's 30 parishes. See, it's there's a, 30 parishes, there's 30, yeah, and some of those parishes also have a mission church attached to them. So, 
So it's a big, it's a big area. It's very rural. Um, the parishes are far apart um, and the communities are, are scattered. And so this is going to be a, a really a important, uh, important project. We're also hiring a youth and young adult ministry coordinator for the North. Um, Cecilia, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we're looking for a person to work alongside Anna uh, for the first couple of years, but eventually stay up there in Reading to work with um, youth and young adult ministries. They need a lot of support, um, even just to start up things. There's a lot of communities where there's not really anything happening or nothing taking place with the young people there, um, and we'd really like to support them. So we're looking for a candidate who is able to, um, to commit to this big project, a big move, um, if they're not from that area, but that really are up for what is a mission. I mean, it's really a mission territory in all, in all its ways, and I think um, we really need someone to support the people up there, um, someone who can work with both the English-speaking and Spanish-speaking communities, not necessarily someone who speaks Spanish, but that is at least able you know, to work um, interculturally um, to bridge those gaps between the communities if they do exist. Um, someone who's really dynamic, a self-starter, um, who's really just willing to get into the field and get their hands dirty is what we're looking for. And this is yeah. like, I mean, I think you saw, you heard it in Anna's voice. It's very exciting work up there in the north, and we're just looking for a partner for Anna to really revitalize what's going up on there. And then as we, as we move through this project, so revitalizing the parishes, it's critical that the youth and young adult are youth and young adults are connected and involved in every aspect of the project. So yeah. we're really trying to find someone. So you know, if that sounds like someone you know, or if you're out there looking for a challenge, something new, you're willing to relocate to Reading, this would be the great uh, you know a great opportunity for you. So try to encourage you in that. Another yeah. thing I wanted to go ahead. I'm just go ahead, Anna. That, that's something that, that's um, really interesting up here is that the distance is such a big issue, but that's something that some of them, when, when I've been meeting with the different uh, pastoral councils, especially the, the deanery ones, they're willing to work together. I think there just hasn't been the opportunity for them to work together. And now they're kind of excited that they have this um, hopefully permanent presence of, of the diocese that will be able to facilitate that. You know, the, some of the youth um, leadership were present at one of the meetings I went to, and I was uh, chatting with them about possibly having some kind of St. John Bosco weekend with them, and they got really excited about that. And I thought, oh, cool, that's really cool. So so um, the, the person that, that is thinking about it right now, hey, maybe I want to be this youth and young adult person, um, the leadership is willing. They're open. They they do want these things. They uh, we have so much possibility to to do some wonderful things to connect them. Um, some of the not that far in distance, they still feel that that um, they don't connect enough and things like that. So maybe this is a way to kind of bridge those those gaps uh, between them and to to create those opportunities for them to to work alongside each other to get to know each other so that the young people don't feel wow there's only 15 people and there's only 15 young people in this whole community no there's a lot more but they're not connecting uh, parish with parish so so hopefully that's going to be something that um, that's priority for us great you know the other the other thing that uh, we're going to be doing up in the north um as part of the project is uh the called and gifted uh workshop weekends and uh cecilia you know a little bit about that tell yeah. us a little bit about the <laughs> called and gifted well so <laughs> one called and gifted um, as a diocese we did one just specifically for young adults and that was really well attended we had a around 100 young adults participate in that one, and that was this past August. We have one tomorrow, um, October 24th, at St. Basil's Parish, and that's a collaborative um, between the three parishes in Vallejo, and we have one on November 7th coming up in at St. Clair's in Roseville um, as well. So we're looking to schedule some more dates. We have some that are cooking up, um, just really waiting to finalize some details. But this workshop, um, for those who don't know what it is, it's really an opportunity to discern your charisms, um, learn about the role of the laity um, and the mission of the church in the world, and see how the way that God has made you, the gifts that he has given you, um, are meant to be put to the service of the church. So um, for the young adults who attended, they were actually really, really excited um, and really um, motivated after that workshop. They, a lot of them said they really understood more what it meant to be in ministry, um, you know, because I think a lot of people get involved with ministry and um, 
you know, there's so we're so short on volunteers in every area. We're just <laughs> we'll take anyone kind of a uh, kind of a feel. Um, but when we really look at, you know, what are the gifts of this person? What charisms do they have? And when that's when a person is really able to thrive. And that's when we're able to sustain um, and retain volunteers is when they're really doing something that gives them life. Um, so this workshop helps the person to identify what those things are um, within themselves and helps them discern that. So they are able to take a position or a role in the church um, that is really not only life giving to the parish or to the community, but to themselves as well. Yeah, that is a, it's a really great workshop. I actually went through the, the, that workshop when I was down in LA. And one of the interesting things that you said right now, Cecilia, about uh, people discerning their gifts and if they're not involved in ministry, it's important for people that are in ministry that, that think this is my gift. This is, I, you know, this is what, what I want to give to the church. But sometimes when they go through, when, when I personally went through that process, I found out that my gifts were totally different. I really sat down and thought about it, and I thought, "What? You know, what's this?" But it it gave me that ability to to focus in in a more positive way the the gifts that I really had. It wasn't just what I wanted to do, which was fine. You know that that's great and wonderful. But knowing exactly what my gifts were after discerning them, you know, honestly, I was able to to pinpoint what it was that I do well and I and excel in that. So that's something that this is a this is a really great workshop that's coming to, to our diocese. And uh, there are people up here in the north are, are looking forward to that as well. Um, hopefully those dates are going to be um, given out for, for when those workshops are going to be. And they're in both in English and in Spanish as well. So that's, that's great. Yeah, I think, um, you know, th this whole idea of the, what are our gifts, a lot of times, we, um, we have an assumption, like you said, Anna, of what our gifts are, and we haven't really spent any time really seriously discerning those gifts. And we need to realize that when we're given gifts of God from God, discerning those gifts is not just like, oh, I think I have the gift of this, right? <laughs> it's also, it needs to be affirmed <laughs> in the community, you know, affirmed by those in leadership yeah. and those in the community. So, you know, the, the example I always give is, you know, you, you always have these people that think they have the gift of being the cantor, right? And their voice is horrible, right? <laughs> and they're like, but that person, you know, they think I have this gift. This is my gift. I want to be, you know, I want to share my gift of music. But that person has to be very aware if people in the community aren't affirming that gift and saying, wow, you really, you know, when you canter, you really help me lead, you know, you really help me um, pray. Or when you, canter, you know, I feel like the angels are singing or something. If you never get that feedback, then it may not be your gift, right? You've got to be like, you know, you got, so, so that's part of this right. is giving you not only some ideas of what might be your gifts based on some, a survey, it's like an assessment they do, but it's also giving right. you tools when you leave of how do I discern whether these really are my gifts? Because, you know, right. people don't discover their gifts till, you know, late in life. And they, then they go, Oh, that was my gift. I should have been using that all along. I never realized it. So it's a good thing. And actually, um, we actually, uh, we've actually sponsored this workshop um, after St. Clair will be, St. Clair will be the fifth time mm -hmm. because last year we sponsored it in, uh, in Presentation Parish uh, in Sacramento and then also at St. John's in Chico. Um, and so uh, after this, uh, after this next two, we'll, we'll have done it in five and then we're planning at least five or six called and gifted workshops uh, in the North uh, starting uh, next year. So it'll be a, a really exciting uh, thing. The other uh, thing that I want to just make people aware about, um, just preliminary, preliminarily, because you can't sign up for this yet, but just giving you the inside scoop, we are starting a new uh, advanced lay ministry program. And we're doing that along with the Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology in Berkeley, with the Salesian, the Institute of Salesian Studies, and also with the Siena Institute, which brings you the called and gifted workshop. And this, uh, this lay ministry program is really, um, it's really designed specifically to form lay people. A lot of times when lay people go and they want to like be formed, they end up, you know, going into a program that was originally designed uh, for a priest or for a, a religious sister or something like that. And this, this um, is a unique program because it's starting with the idea of we want to form the laity first as missionary disciples and evangelizers for the world and then possibly as ministers for the church. But the, but the whole formation is going to be rooted in our baptismal call. 
you'll be hearing more about that in the future. But I want to let I know that there's people out there that have been saying, you know, hey, I did my basic um, certification or I've taken a bunch of classes and I really want to go a little bit deeper, but I don't want to get a master's degree. But I really, you know, or, or I'm, I'm inv- a lot of people are involved in ministry and they're like, what's the next step in my formation to be better in this ministry? You know, I'm serving in this ministry and sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. What is the diocese offer to help us? So this, uh, this new program, this new advanced late ministry program, you'll be hearing more about in the future. And I, I think it'd be a great opportunity for people to get involved in. So um, what else do we have going on? What else do we have coming up in the DEC? Any, any other things you guys can think of? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's, all, that's all we, that's all we have for now. So. Our, depart- that, our department is the busiest department. Right <laughs> now. So I was like, well, what is going on? There is actually, there's, um, there's a workshop coming up in uh, three or four weeks up here in the north. It's going to uh, take place at Our Lady of Mercy. It'll be in both English and Spanish for catechists and uh, people who work in, in catechesis. Uh, it'll be two separate classes. One of them is uh, how to teach the liturgical year and is um, creative uh, prayer experiences in the classroom. So uh, we'll have that on November 14th at Our Lady of Mercy Parish in Reading. Okay, well, I, you know, I, I just want to let you know that you can find out all the inf- find out information on some of the things we've been talking about and then also all of our workshops and classes at two websites. One is our department website, which is at scd.org. Click on Evangelization and Catechesis to get to our website. The other thing you can do is you can go to saccatholic.com or .org, saccatholic.org. And if you go on there, that has a listing of all the events and workshops all over the diocese. Um, SAC Catholic is really a great resource. If, if you're out there and you have something going on in your parish, you want to get the word out on it, please post it on SAC Catholic, and we'll try to get that information out to uh, everybody in the diocese. So remember those two websites, scd.org, that's our diocesan website. Click on Evangelization and Catechesis for our department website. And then you can also go to uh, SAC Catholic. Dot org, and that has all the events um, uh, that we've been talking about. I believe some of the workshops that Anna, Anna's been talking about are up there. Called and Gifted is up there. Um, anyway, thanks for joining us for our podcast. We hear uh, each week talking to you a little bit about what's going on with the DEC. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.